Greetings, I'm Rob Chappers. And I'm the captain. Welcome again once more unto our the world, the world of Captain and the Chappers and Andertons in Back Guildford. in the room that Back we love the, room, the best. That we love. And not a shitty pub somewhere. Well, it's not a shitty pub, it's a great pub, but you know, as in a pub where <laughs> we, we had to be because we cocked up the bar. I cocked up the booking. I cocked up the yes. Anywho. Anywho. Should we stand by these amps? Stand by me. Take your cable out. I'll be your friend. There is actually a standby switch on the back of it if you wanted to use it. You know what? I couldn't find it because it's such a small device and I hadn't looked. So Those two things put together made me an idiot. I'm going to hold up for you, the people, you the people, the latest and greatest technology in micro nano midget amps from <laughs> the wonderful people at Vox. Check that out, Rob. It's Look at that. absolutely ridiculous. It's in the palm of your hand. Oh yeah, it does have a standby switch on the back. And an attenuator. Are we attenuated then? Uh, I'll, do you know what? I'm going to talk the people through the features of this. Okay. So, the clever people at Vox. Now, here's a bit of history. Vox has been around since the 1950s. One of the, uh, you know, probably one of, if you like, the original kind of uh, amp manufacturers in the world, used by famous artists from the Beatles and Hank Marvin through to Brian May and Brian Adams and anyone else called Brian for that matter. Um, and. They are also, well, more recently, I say more recently, at some point in its history, they were acquired by the clever people at Korg. Korg are absolutely huge, in case you didn't know that. Yes, so, and I quite like the way they, they, they sort of split the, the, the resource behind Vox. So if they're just designing like um, a, a, an AC15, AC13, like a heritage model, they leave that entirely <coughs> up to the British designers who've been doing Vox for a long time and just said, you design those amplifiers. And then when they're designing uh, modeling amplifiers and stuff with new technology in it, they collaborate. Collaborate, stop and listen. <laughs> or whatever I they suspect do. with a brand new invention, stuff there. <laughs> Grab a hold of me tightly. Oh my God, <laughs> like the entire <laughs> 80s and 90s went straight through my head. Um, so, Vox amplifiers. Yeah, so look. This is called the uh, the MV series. There are three amps in the range: the MV Clean, the MV AC, which I guess would be perhaps it's you know a nod to its more heritage sound, and the MV Rock. And they are. I'm going to let you guess now. If you don't already know, uh, actually the clue is in the name, isn't it? But guess how loud these things are. That is a 50 watt guitar amp. Yeah, it's pretty stupid. It's pretty stupid. I must admit, watts. when Lee said to me yesterday, which is when I found out we were doing these Vox amplifiers, that we were doing little tiny affordable Vox amplifiers, yeah. a little bit of me, <clears throat> a little bit of me died. <laughs> Just a little bit of me. Because I thought, oh, it's going to be some kind of kind of semi-good, not great yeah. little affordable. It wouldn't and be I, I walked upstairs. It would be, pu <clears throat> it'd be poo tube. I'm in the process of buying a, a guitar. <laughs> Maybe guitars. For recording, because of Dorje recording an album later this year. And as I walked up the stairs, I thought, I think they're playing my new guitars. I wonder what amps they're using. It definitely doesn't sound like the Vox amps. And it was the Vox amps. <laughs> Now, one of the hardest things about making guitar amplifiers is we all love tubes I love or tubes. valves, depending on which side of the Atlantic Ocean you live on, but we're talking about the same thing. Um, and I guess the problem with valves is um, they are relatively expensive as components go, <coughs> make a lot of heat, so therefore, you know, are difficult to put into small devices uh, and, you know, take up a lot of space. So you wouldn't think that a little doodah like this could have a tube in it. And you'd kind of be half right. Um, except, of course, those clever people at Korg have teamed up with another clever Japanese um, manufacturer that I can't remember their name, but they have designed a thing called a new tube, which uh, our wonderful editor Rory will flash an image up on screen right now. And it kind of looks a bit like an EEPROM that might go in a computer, you know, like one of these chips with prongs on it that you put it in. But actually, it's got real bits of tube in it. It absolutely have. And it's essentially, in fact, you know what? I'm going to just refer to my notes because it, I can actually tell you 
So basically, here we go. It is similar to a conventional vacuum tube, has an anode grid filament structure and operates exactly as a triode vacuum tube does. <laughs> but of course, it doesn't make anything like the heat or take <clears throat> up anything like the space or cost anything like as much as a, a conventional preamp tube. Question be. YouTube. Is this just the natural evolution of the valve slash tube? Are we eventually going to have to get to the point when tube things change and produce new things and things are re-evaluated and things are made better, more affordable, safer? Like, for example, your iPhone. If you think about your iPhone five years ago, what was it like and what is it like now? Imagine it, it was like a cup <coughs> with a bit of string coming out of it 20 years ago, wasn't it? You used to do that and just hold it up and listen to like your brother or your sister going, hello. I, and now I it's a digital actually, wave wandering thing. Actually did used to do that. Yeah. Um, but is this, is this, are we accepting of this change? Or is this something that we resist steadfastly because we're like that? Are we more accepting if it's an affordable tiny thing than if it's in a big thing? I think that it's hard, that, that no one's got a crystal ball. But I suspect well, at some well, okay, somebody <laughs> somebody's got a crystal ball. Whether it does anything or not, who knows? But I suspect at some point in the future, uh, for reasons perhaps to do with health and safety, or demand, or cost, or all three of those things, that conventional glass vacuum tubes will cease to be manufactured. We could be talking ten years down the line, fifty years, hundred years, whatever. Mm. Um, and I suspect that. Either digital modelling will take over because it'll just be so utterly, uh, you know, impossible to tell the difference anymore, uh, or someone will just invent a, 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 an easier to manufacture, a cleaner, you know, yeah. more environmentally friendly version yeah. of a tube, uh, and that's kind of what new tube is. So look, we have talked plenty. Let's. Uh, so that that's what's basically inside this. The power amp, the fifty watt power amplifier, is a class D. Power amplifier, that's very widely used in audio equipment. Lots of guitar amps uh, have that type of power section. So it's just that, if you like, in the preamp is where the tube works. On the back, this might be easier for us to sort of flash up a picture of one on screen now rather than a close up, but we'll see. Um, on and off switch, standby switch. Here's my only criticism, and in fairness, probably a slightly unfair criticism because I suspect. Uh, it's got a super weird, unique power supply. Oh, really? Yeah, it's a 19 volt fat barrel, whatever you want to call that power supply. So, downside, I'm guessing, is if you lose the power supply. I reckon uh, you can get one of those in Woolies. I doubt it. Um, but it's a joke you never know. Woolies no longer exist. Oh, that's true. You yes. definitely couldn't get one in Woolies. No. What would be the American equivalent of Woolies? Uh, big, big well, general store that's gone bust recently. Well, like a, it was well, like a mom and pop store that did bust. well and made like. 50 anyway, numbers of them. I like this feature because I think this is in recognition of the fact that um, you may end up using a very small cab or a bigger one, but you have an EQ control to either run it flat, which is what we're doing into the big cab, or deep, which is what we're doing <laughs> into the little cab. Then you can attenuate it, which is crazy. You can go down to from full power <clears throat> output, one tenth power output, or one one hundredth power output. That's crazy. Um, it. The volume or the power output, at least, of the amplifier changes depending on the impedance of the speaker. So into a 4 ohm speaker or two 8 ohm speakers to get your 4 ohms, you'd get 50 watts. Into an 8 ohm speaker, which is this one, you would get 25 watts in full mode. And into a 16 ohm speaker, which is the 212, you would get 12 and a half watts. Um, what? What, what, what? What? What, what? What, 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 what? Well, shall I play them some soundage then? So Rob is plugged into the rock one. Uh, I'm plugged into the AC one and we'll come to the MV one. We have got reverb pedals plugged into the front because as you notice there's no reverb and there's no effects loop so we've got to go In fact, I think what I'll them. do is I'll start off without the reverb pedal just to give Good them you, native man. tone. I should say that the gain is only set to about 11 o'clock. Yeah. So it's kind of like early morning coffee time tone. And do you want to go into this speaker or the big speaker? I'm happy, big I'm happy with the big speaker. Go in the big speaker. Thank which you. is So this is a regular Vox 212 <coughs> with the two uh, G12M green -dunk, -dunk. speakers in them. It's a... <coughs> that's what that is.
Stupid. And that's only 12 and a half watts, and we've only got the volume not even halfway up. <laughs> and I will say, I was absolutely fooled that it doesn't have a traditional valve in at least the preamp. Let's see, so back the volume down, because that's kind of typically where you'll often be able to, you'll get that sense that it's a, it's yeah, a, yeah, yeah. It's a fake amp. So, you know, like uh, a, no, no reverb, no pedals. And no pedals, so just... Get it really clean if you want to. But why I, would you want to? Uh, can I just sound sounds fantastic? <laughs> can I just see what the game's like if I put it to two o'clock? Drop it, drop tune it, and really chug. with the gain at around two o'clock and almost sort of, I guess the volume mirroring that at around two o'clock, pushing it a bit more, you that, get that sag, which is really yeah. interesting. Well, I don't because know when do you that, get a sag? I mean, I wonder if that's more to do with the fact that the speakers are just enjoying being driven a bit harder or whatever, but... Um, they do love it. It sounds great. So that's the rock one. I've got, now what I've done is they, they, they've also designed a matching, uh, well two matching cabs actually for this. So they've got a, the really little one with the eight inch speaker, which is what I'm plugged into. Um, and uh, then there's a 12 inch version of this as well. Um, this is only 89 pounds, this speaker. So we've got to be realistic about what we might, uh, the types of sounds we would get from this. The 12 inch speaker looks exactly the same, same grill cloth, same vinyl covering, same piping, but obviously it's bigger. That's 249. Um, and let's have a little listen. Let's have a little listen. Quite, sorry, I've got a question. Yes. What's Eco? Uh, to be honest with you, it's some ridiculous, you know, probably EU directive that we're not allowed to call on and off anymore. So we have to have oh. like Eco mode on or off. <laughs> what? 
I, that was just like, what? Like, I don't really understand. It's I'm assuming it means economy. It's more environmentally friendly to have your amp switched off than it is to have it switched on. Because it's using less. It's using but less. obviously it's you know. Well, I just I was like, I know. What's, what's, I just don't understand. Where's the on-off switch? That's why I didn't have to turn it off. I'm getting like, to that age now where I'm becoming a grumpy old man. I just don't like. I don't like the fact that we're not allowed to. You know, victory aren't allowed to use the word standby anymore. It says preheat. And these aren't allowed to use on and off, has to be eco. <sighs> Can't call someone a p anymore, you've got, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm plugged into the AC, sorry, the MV50 with the AC kind of characteristic. I believe actually I may have told a small porky pie about what eco no. mode is. Because I think what this amp was just, I just turned around and this amp wasn't working. I was like, oh no, the curse of the Chappers and the Captain demo where gear blows up halfway through. <laughs> but um, it wasn't that. It had, by the looks of things, I'm guessing the eco mode uh, is- It's like your laptop. It just switches the thing off if you don't use it. And what you've got to do is you've got to lean around the back and kind of go, ee -ee, and then it kind of pops back on again. So again, why you have to have that? Should we verify know. that with the man from Vox? Yes. Ah, um, um, so it's an EU directive. Uh, electronics need to have a thing on the back where they, they go to sleep just like a laptop does. Just like me. If I don't do anything for an extended <laughs> period of time, I will go to sleep. You know what? There's one burning question in my mind. <laughs> hmm? Well, the burning question in my mind is how loud is it? Um, ah! Let's hope it's not a burning question, but let's see how loud it goes. Shall I just... Come on then. Here we go. You play and I'll all, start... All the way up. All the way up. It's really loud. Well, and don't forget, we're only getting 12 and a half watts out of it because of the impedance of this speaker cabinet. So... Do we think we could gig with that? Um, well, I think you... I think it's as loud as any of the little micro amps that are out it's there. It's really on the border, it's, isn't it's it? Well, I bet you, <clears throat> if you were to run this into... Um, what, a 412? Well, something that did get it to... Uh, ideally, what you really want is like two 8-ohm cabs so that you can drop it down to yeah. 4 ohms and you get the 50 watts, and then I'm absolutely convinced you'd be able to gig with it. As it stands like that, I think it's the same as all the microamps in that you, your overdriven sound would be loud yeah. enough. If you back down to clean, you might struggle a bit. Yeah. A couple of microphones. However, I did mean to say, and I forgot to tell you this when I was doing the spec, and to be honest with you, I wouldn't mind if it's not too much of a pain in the ass before the end of this demo. The headphone socket yeah. is also an emulated line output. Oh, right. So we might as well at least just chuck this into the desk, see what the emulation's out. Might be crap, who knows. Um, but if it sounds okay, you could then essentially gig with this into your speaker cabinet and just give the sound guy a feed out the headphone output. Well, you know, get an emulated <coughs> it's output. about as loud as one of those micro darks, isn't that's, it? That's what I was and thinking. I saw, I saw on uh, Instagram book, Faceland, yeah. YouTube, a, a couple of Texas guys in a band just rocking two of those. And yeah. they seem to be doing fine. I think I think you could. Anyway, look, so here is the uh, AC. MV50 AC with reverb. I've got a Boss reverb pedal on the floor. Uh, I'm using an Epiphone Les Paul because I take note of all the comments, uh, well, most of the comments anyway, uh, about the fact that we are just surrounded with guitars that are like unaffordable. And you love that one, don't uh, you? And this is really good. So I'm, I've just, I haven't restrung this. This was literally straight off the shelf in the store. Bloody good it to does. me. Yeah. Um, so obviously the little speaker, the, the biggest, biggest difference in sound between what Rob was playing and what I'm playing is clearly the fact that we're not going through the, you know, going through the smaller speaker. But, but you could know, we 
could we just, for the sake of, of comparison, yeah. quickly put that through the double speaker yeah. so that well, people can hear it. that as well? Let me run through the rest of the tones on this through this and then we'll swap it over. Um, got a new chord. Anyway, um, of course, you could use this with a drive pedal if you want more juice out of it. And I've got my favorite uh, full tone plimsoll on the floor here. Uh, it's just nothing wrong, is it, with that? Like, I'm very, very, very impressed. Um, I have got the, the deep switch on on here to compensate for the fact that the speaker is uh, small. But let's, as Rob said, let's plug it. Let's plug the bigger speaker in, and see how close to an actual AC30 we get. We're now plugged into the bigger, the 212 cab. Say, <laughs> it's vanished. It's fine. It'll sound totally different now. I've got a different plectrum. Uh, I do not, I'm not sitting here thinking I'm playing through some little shit cheap band. No, we're really not, no. I'm sitting here thinking I've got a good guitar sound out of an affordable guitar and a super affordable and compact little yeah. guitar amp. So look, so that's the AC one. Uh, I mean, again, same as Rob's, it'll, you know, it'll clean up nice, well, it'll clean up, I've got, got a serious plectrum dropping issue today. It'll clean up nice as well. pedal amp all looks good so the last bit uh, and actually so far really really surprisingly the most popular one has been the clean one and I'm wondering whether Why? or not that's I wonder whether people are just like bolting these to their pedal boards or something and just using them oh. as like a, a pedal amp or whatever <coughs> but we're gonna plug the clean one in and jam out um, so that you can see well, actually I'll give you a quick demo of what what the clean one sounds like uh, actually, you know, the other thing we haven't done yet is just do the attenuation. Re rewind. With the cross say balls, so the to do the re rewind. This so, one comes up for all the late. Just teams. to confuse uh, everybody out there, um, I was holding the MV50 clean whilst telling you what the all the buttons on the back do, and it would appear that the MV clean has a very slightly different back panel to the um, AC or the Rock. Um, so it's actually, it's only the clean one that has this like full to one tenth to one hundredth power output and it's the AC and the rock one just for some reason have an impedance selector instead. Hmm. So I wonder what happens on the clean one if you just put a different... Let's try it man, plug just... it in. So how much are these? Weird. Um, $199. One ninety nine for the amp, eighty nine for the, the little speaker. So like a sub three hundred pound set. Right. Um, or, but I I suspect where these will be most popular will be um, guys who are gigging with a conventional head and cab, mm. and will just go 
one of these in the gig bag or one of these on the pedal board or whatever <clears throat> and rock plug one. straight into the cab so anyway right we'll we'll um we'll jump over to the clean big clean sound still got the reverb on Isn't it? Yeah, it's really good. With my new chord. Let's know. If if so, that was just over halfway. But if we gun it, does it get a bit of crunch? Who knows? Probably. So if I'm gunning off. that, I'm gonna have to just turn the reverb down a bit. So you're gunning the. I've gunned the, uh, gun the volume. Bass, I see. So yeah. there's no gain control no, no, on the no. clean. It's just a. People are buying this because it's a rig. This is a confused face. I love it. I like it. I mean, I, again, I think it sounds better when it's just. You know, I'm there, not going to be stuffy. running out to sell my thousand pound valve amplifier tomorrow to replace it with one of these. No, but if you but were touring, you might get one of those and put it on your you pedal board. Absolutely would. And I can kind of see, as you sort of said a second ago, why maybe the, the, the clean is the one that's selling the best because I, I, I genuinely do think pedal board guys are just going to go, why not stick one? Literally, this probably would go on yeah. the board or like yeah, in, yeah. The, in the pedal case. And then it's like, yeah, it just in case my regular head craps out on me or whatever, boom, straight into the cab. So let's jam out with you playing whatever you like uh, and you can be All through right. whichever speaker you like. And I'll, I'm, I'm, can I just stay with this MV50 and my distortion pedal? Because it, it just sounds you can, Ripping, you can, right. Do you, you want to go AC and just gun it with the... Because well, you've got the telly, I think you go old school. All right, man.
you can probably tell by our facial expressions we are mightily impressed. Yeah. Um, I would buy one of, I'd buy that over most of the other competition. I, a million percent. Now, Pete uh, Honore was kind of going, yeah, well, if it's 200 pounds for that and, you know, wouldn't you just go and buy like a secondhand little, you know, and I'm sort of thinking, do you know what? There's always going to be a secondhand alternative that looks like good value. So I think it's kind of unfair to, to sort of say that. And I don't, and I think you're, it's without a doubt for me, it's biggest selling factor is its size. Yeah. And the fact that it just sounds great is just a bonus. You yeah, know, it is. It's like, um, yeah. so. But we yeah. should definitely do we an have updated, to do a micro amp updated shootout. micro amp shootout, yeah. I'm just putting it out there, based on today's demo and with no scientific <clears throat> AB test against it or anything like that, for me, this is the new daddy of the micro amp market. Right. Just saying. You heard it here first. Although, again, I'm just going to quickly backtrack and shovel myself out of the hole. It is twice the price in the UK of an orange micro terror. Right. Which was the previous, in my opinion. Daddy. Daddy. Right. Uh, and may well still be the daddy when we do an A-B test. And I suppose we'll always be, it is cheaper. So How much is an HT5 enough. head? HT5? HT5s five, are like 350 quid or something like the that. The head? You know? Right. Maybe a bit cheaper, okay. but it's certainly it, the one. The one that's similar money to one of these is the HT One. Oh, okay. Uh, so big, big power difference. And again, HT One R is still a convent. It's a small head, but it's yeah, not. Yeah. Um, fit it's in the the, you wouldn't put it on your pedal board. That no. I'm, I'm guessing you could take this bar off with a hacksaw, hacksaw, hacksaw. As promised, uh, here's the uh, emulated output. So there's a headphone socket on the back, doubles up as a, a speaker emulated output. So we're running this straight into our interface. I can't hear what this sounds like. So if the speaker emulation is rubbish, then you know that's what it is. And if it's really good, then you know that's what it is as well. So um, here we go, clean. And distortion. There we go. I don't really like doing these kind of emulated output things because we, yeah, we have no idea. So it could be like, in fact, Rory, if it sounds great, go. And Roy, if it sounds rubbish, go. There we go. I'll leave you to decide. <laughs> <laughs> and if it sounds all right, go. Yeah. <laughs> I've been Rob Chapman. Okay. And I've been the captain. See you later. See you later. Tell me about Rory. So he uh, edits videos. Rory's awesome. <laughs> <laughs>